What's up, people? Sly Girl here, and welcome back to another episode of Monster Prom. In the last episode, I was playing with Ren. This time, I'm playing with my good friend, Doug. Say hi. Hey, how's it going, everyone? It's me, everybody's dad. <laughs> because you are the dad friend, according to the Discord group. By the way, I can't hear myself in an echo. Uh-oh. Oh, well, we'll deal with it. I'm playing. Two players. Full game. Do you want to be narrator? Should I just be narrator? Uh, I'll do narrator and the guy voice, because why not? Alright. Ah, spooky high school. The sweetest years of our lives. Back then we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, and sometimes just stupid. But always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. You're obviously going with Cry. <laughs> of course I am. Why wouldn't I? I'm still going with the name I used last time. I don't know why I like it so much. I just do. I'm kind of getting some lag, but okay. I, I can do this. And I'm going to go with uh, Sungwon. Why not? With who? Green guy. Uh, green guy. All right. Your name. And let's go with uh, the default name, Brian. All right. You good boy? Yeah, uh, best boy. <laughs> All right, I still have to press it anyway. <laughs> we had yet to experience its ultimate challenge, Monster Prom. I remember it clearly. Three weeks were left, and as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Miranda Vanderbilt, age 19, a sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. Gah! Damien LeVay, age 21, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. <laughs> Scott Howell, age 21, a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly large heart. Cute heart. <sighs> Liam DeLioncourt, Age 400 something. something. <laughs> a, hi a hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was truly a lovable dork. Yay! Polly Geist, 22? A party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. What? And Vera Oberlin, age 23. A mean, self made Gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear. It had to be one of them. But who? We only had three weeks to choose our prom date. And even more daunting, we only had three weeks to woo them and conquer their heart. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. I still have no idea what I'm gonna be doing. <laughs> Welcome to Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever. AKA every quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more. We're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. <laughs> <laughs> Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever, trademark, will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into a your character's stats. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's begin. It's your chance to fix global warming. Go ahead. Uh, I don't know which one I want. World's doomed while still investing in ships. Nah. Invite the sun to the... Debating between the either one or two. Might do one. Your turn. Okay. I'm trying to... Th I'm trying to think of what stats I want rather than uh, what which answer better reflects me, but that's not the way to play the game. Um, okay. Well, it depends. Who are you, you going to try to go for? I mean, I was going to try to go for either um, uh, Miranda or Polly. 
So I know Polly is more about the fun. That's what she I, is. I think Miranda likes charm, money, and intelligence. I think she's more charm, yeah. Hmm. Which is none of these, admittedly. Yeah. Uh. All right, fuck it. Uh, global warming isn't real. I invented it. And now science is claiming authorship because science is a lame copycat with no original ideas. Oh, this is the one I didn't want to answer before, damn it. <laughs> Time to incriminate yourself. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh... Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so you're a furry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just did random. We all know Nikki's the furry here. Um. Uh, tough. Fuck it, a uh, <laughs> dolphin. It's the only animal that can fuck just for pleasure. So you got fun, I got bold. Would be a killer accessory. Uh. A necklace your own name in case you forget? Nah. I say brass knuckles, that's dope. Uh. Hmm. You can go for me. I wear my sunglasses at <laughs> night. <laughs> so I take it that's your answer? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. There yes. you go. I kind of have a plan. But All right. I need way more money, so to the library. That day, spend some time on the library's PCs, playing some good old online poker. And of course, your handle is black gold. <laughs> I know, I was looking at that. <laughs> Gambling seem seems like a stupid and dangerous decision. But who cares? This time it paid off, so fuck it. You gain two money. I'm gonna need way more than that. You noticed Scott and Damien waving their phones in each other's faces, and you decided to take a look. As you get closer, you realize they're discussing Pokemon's Go, the mobile game. Uh, <laughs> awesome, bro! Whoa, you got a Walter Jacobs? Those are so rare. I was gonna say, who's gonna be voicing who? But okay. <laughs> uh, like I said. Uh, I guess I voice the uh, gentleman and you voice the ladies just because we're being predictable today. Sure. You bet your ass I do. And check it out. His fiscal responsibility stat is 11. He's a fucking beast at doing his taxes. <laughs> I heard he's lactose intolerant, though. <laughs> yeah, I feed him nothing but cheese pizza to fuck with him. He hates it. God, Damien, you're an asshole. That's not very nice. I'm super nice to my Leslie Dunbar. <laughs> Fuck you. You got Leslie Dunbar? The queen of insurance liability management? <laughs> yeah, I had to trade two Mindy Babcock and a Jared Fogel all to... That's nothing. You've got a Pokemon so rare, it'll send them both into shock. You whip out your phone and show them your... Let's see. I know what I'm going for. Now that's what I'm talking about. I didn't even know they made Pokemans like this. What type is this? Criminal? Why the fuck did nobody tell me this was in the game? I don't know, maybe because he never looked. Whoa, Damien, calm down. You're shaking your phone and it's upsetting Walter Jacobs. <laughs> Fuck Walter Jacobs. I'm getting myself a Scabs rent-a-car, and he's gonna murder all my other Pokemans. <laughs> uh, that's the greatest thing. Murder. Yo, know, I'd, uh, I'd offer to trade you my whole roster for that son of a bitch, but all my Pokemans are obviously lame as hell. And hell is pretty lame. Why do you think I hang out here? I'm up here all the time. Tell you what, 
I'll beat up the, uh, the loser of your choice. Free of charge, if you hook me up with that mighty bastard. <laughs> Why not? You never know when a free beatdown might come in handy. You lose one Scab's rent a car, but you gain two creativity and one boldness. I would um, use that op sure. opportunity so fast, you don't even know. Same, honestly. <laughs> uh, where are you gonna go, man? Hmm. I could stand to uh, up my charm. Let's go to the gym. Got it. That is not the gym. That is not the gym. That's the gym. <laughs> that day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirit. Leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural-born leader. You gain two charm. You needed it. Later that night, you head out to the club with Polly and Liam. Using your fake IDs, also known as Polly's boobs, <laughs> you have no problem getting into the door. The real trouble begins when you get to the bar and Polly starts teasing Liam. <laughs> I'm telling you, boy, you got no game. And I'm telling you that I reject the ludic sexual paradigm underlying your assertion. All I'm saying is that if you're really as cool as you act all the time, you should have no problem getting digits from that Jenner and in indetermined locust swarm down at the end of the bar. Well, of course I could, if I wanted to. But you see, the key to my allure is that I don't want anything. Sure, sure. Sounds to you like Liam's just scared. You decide to go over there and show them both how it's done by... Hey, what are you gonna do? Dancing so hard that you would also separate into a cloud of locusts. I hope you're able to do this. Okay, you are. Okay, you dance until your body is a swarm of locusts. This is no problem for you, apparently. <laughs> apparently, you're a fucking zombie. But okay. The hot young locust swarm at the end of the bar is impressed, and so is Polly. Uh, from Polly's face on this screen, it doesn't seem uh. like it. <laughs> See, Liam? All you gotta do is dance until it physically alters the, the uh, composition of your body. But I can only turn into bats. Or rather, bat. Singular. <laughs> Not even a swarm, really. <laughs> oh, that's alright, dude. We can't all be flipping awesome. Well, while Polly comforts Liam, you manage to secure a party for afterwards at the Locust Swarm House. Even a couple of rich mummies from out of town decide to join. At school the next day, everyone at school is talking about how you can apparently turn into bugs. Awesome. You gain two fun and one charm. Yo, did you hear about this zombie that turned into locusts? How the fuck can you do that? Oh, well, it's easy. All I do is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Everyone choose an occupation. Streamer. Uh... <laughs> uh, lifeguard. How weird it would be to see a slutty costume based streamer. It's... Streamer. I was gonna yeah. say, it's already done for Lifeguard. Honestly. It's done to all hell. Although you'd honestly be surprised what there is and isn't sexy right. versions of. I actually ran into this question once, and apparently there's sexy ice cream trucks. What? <laughs> I know. But, um, uh. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't, All right. th I don't think I want to know. Uh, let's see. I kind of want to go to the store, but for what I want, I don't think I have enough money. Let me check. Show me that money. Let's face it, you're probably going to end up losing your money in some stupid way anyway. Why not spend it here first? It's called being smart. Uh, yeah, it's ten bucks. I can't get it. Oh well. Oh. Um, sure. Okay, I'm gonna go sit with Polly and Damien. I knew you were. Hey. Okay. Listen, Brian, you can totally sit with us. I just hope you didn't bring a gun to a bazooka fight. 
Yeah, we're showing off our best flasks. Well, not the best flask, actually, but the best contents. Good God, there are literal flasks of alcohol openly allowed in school in this school cafeteria. Are there no... <laughs> you cut out, so it just sounded like you said, are there no... <laughs> Rip. Are there no rules? Okay. Apparently not, because Polly sets a fla- uh, bleh, because Polly starts setting a series of flasks down at the table. Okay, so this is beer, my WC wine, whiskey, uh, I don't know, what's that? Ethyl, Ethyl alcohol. Yeah, that. The soul of an infant. Ha! <laughs> Weak. This is radioactive absinthe, this is fire, and this is literal poor life choices. <laughs> I drink out of that every day. Same. Okay, but this one has another smaller flask inside. It is the ultimate flask. Uh, they could probably go on like this for goddamn ever. Maybe you can cut in with the craziest item of all. But think carefully about whom you want to impress with your flask contents. Okay, I know who likes who here. You want to get a dope party started? This flask has ultra whiskey which you can only get when two bottles of uh, have the best bleh, when two <laughs> bottles of the best purest whiskey and make them mate. Heck yeah, heck yeah, heck yeah, let's rage. I've always wanted to make ultra whiskey, but I cannot get my whiskey bottles to fuck. I tried everything, mood lighting, soldier music, chainsaws, because you know chainsaws are going to work. You know, all that cliche romantic stuff. But it seemed not impossible to get them to make sweet whiskey love. I almost started to think inanimate objects can't have sex. But I've had tons of sex with inanimate objects, so that was just silly. If you can make Whiskey X Whiskey turn into Ultra Whiskey, we should definitely apply that principle all over the damn place. Two cars to make a limousine, an orgy of iPhones to become the iPhone XXX, the most advanced update possible, duh. A microwave and a Russian novel to get a pair of designer shoes. I can't wait to create doors. Oh, what? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she's, she's talking about Adidas? <laughs> she's bad shit crazy, we all know this. Can't wait to create doper stuff than the world can even handle, probably. Well, the world probably doesn't need to worry about handling it because there's no way you can pull that insanity <laughs> off, we hope. We hope. But yay for plans with Polly. <clears throat> Let's try places. Everyone choose a celebrity. Hmm. Uh, Chris Pratt. All right, Chris Hensworth. <laughs> Who is best Chris? <laughs> yeah, who's best Chris? We'll be here for a while. For To lead a group during a zombie- Both of them God would! God damn it! Both of them would! <laughs> okay, we're gonna be here for a while. No, nope, uh, I think click, random. Click random. Random. <laughs> Random. I still go first. <laughs> Goody! <laughs> Christ. It's the eternal question. Right. Who is best Chris? I know. Alright, so let's see. I... Although we do know Tom Holland's answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, I think I should work on my charm. What? Why did you do that? I did not... Mm. Fuck you, game. That day you listen to your elders and learn the valuable life lessons. Sometimes, after all the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity in this high school. No, it's not. You gain two smarts. <laughs> You're bored and doodling in your notebook when Damien suddenly appears. Gah! What the fuck is this doodle? Is that me? Uh-oh. Am I cuddling shirtless with Liam? Oh, no. Uh-oh. What? Dude, if you were looking for a shortcut to the morgue, this is your lucky day. Uh-oh. Give me one good reason not to cuddle your face with my fists. Oh, no. They discovered your ironic fat art of them. You can't think of any way to calm down both of them. 
but maybe the right answer can calm down one of them. Uh... Uh... I know this is one how you get one of Liam's secret endings, but I don't know if I want to go down that path. Yeah, no. Uh, see, okay. Don't be silly! I, uh, okay, let's see what ending this nets us with Damien. I... I... No? No, I'm not charming! You, uh, okay, that's it. In the end, it seemed he actually did want to fight you. And so he did. You need to check your people skills. And also some of your ribs, which are probably broken. You lose one boldness and one charm. This is why I wanted to go to the gym! Why the fuck did I go um, to class? Sure. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go raving. Of course. Right one? That day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension, and the consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. You gain two fun. You have 11 fun. Hey, boo! Hey, Brian, darling. It's me, lovely fan favorite Polly. You know, I wasn't always a ghost. Yeah, yeah, this is about to get real. Hear me out. I used to be alive, but I died with unfinished business. Now I gotta live forever like this until I finish it. And you might ask, what's your unfinished business, fan favorite lovely Polly? I guess I can tell you. I never did a reserve Romanian... Reverse Romanian Wilkinson? I don't know. Wilkinson? Wilkinson. You know, sexually. Oh dear. <sighs> oh, I know which ending this is. Oh, I think I do too, thinking about it. <laughs> oh dear. Don't get me wrong, I love being immortal and walking through walls and shit, but my soul will never truly rest until I do that fr freaky sex move. Oh well. This is... This is mm, you could go on the path to that or something else. Or just a normal, maybe. I've done that one loads of times. Just name a town and a place, and I'll reverse Wilkinson all. No, and I'll reverse all <laughs> over your Romanian Wilkinson. <laughs> I like yeah. the I like the bottom one. Throw a smoke bomb and escape with the replica of yourself. Uh, I hope you have the stats for that. Okay, you do. Yes. Finally, someone as well versed in freaky sex as I am. Ugh, I don't like saying that. At least, I can be free of my eternal ghostly prison or whatever. But mostly, freaky sex! Alright, it's on. Prom night, okay? You bring the supplies, I'll bring on my sex expertise. And hey, purge the zucchini, Admiral. You know what I'm talking about. See you soon. She totally phased out. Oh boy. You might have just gotten yourself tickets to the wildness night of your life, but what the fuck is a reverse <laughs> Romanian Wilkinson and what are the supplies? For now, you gain three fun. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna need to grind some of my money for uh that penguin mask. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say I hope you get the money for that penguin mask. Oh god. All right. No, not all right. Get out of here. You are ha having a quiet evening with a coconut uh, t and totally not a uh, t human flesh covered smoothie when Polly phases in. Flavored. Sup, Kai? You plan on coming in my death day party? Nah. It's gonna be lit! It's gonna have all kinds of reminders of the way I died. Guillotines, quicksand, alligators, and all the food will be poisoned, of course. I don't like this. How did she die? <laughs> <laughs> How exactly did this girl die? <laughs> the answer changes every time. It's like King fucking uh, Ratatouille. The one dude changes a story about how he went to prison. You know, I've been thinking about it, and I'm really into the idea of sharing my afterlife with a fellow ghost, you know? Think of all the cute, cute ghost dates we can go on. Going to haunted houses on Halloween and actually haunting them? Walking through walls is to get uh, where we want to go? Appearing in turns to reveal perspective and tru truth to old greedy misters who don't appreciate the holidays. You know, 
all that classic ghost stuff. But I also wouldn't hate dating Brian, so I guess my question to you is, when do you think his death day party will be? Like, when will he become a ghost soon-ish, at least? I'm not s super patient, but I do think he parties- I do think he parties down and could party even further down as a ghost. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna hook you up and do the first one. I'm reading the bottom one, though. Gonna be around a long time, <laughs> trust me. He already has a place reserved in a retirement community, has taken up bingo, <laughs> bingo. an expert knitter, game over. I mean, game not over, not for a long time. He's gonna <laughs> die an old, old... No! <laughs> no! <laughs> I mean, you're kind of a zombie already. <laughs> uh, I'm already dead. <laughs> yeah, you're kind of already dead. And I'm just compo- I'm composed entirely of fear, I think is what Oz is. Yeah. So... Uh, I, he'll be dead by noon, probably. Rootin? HA! I knew Brian lived a life on the wild side! Which will hopefully take him right into an early grave. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Ideally, a grave next to mine, and we can party for eternity and make random ee noises on recordings. I'm not. No. Fuck you, Polly. If you decide to die anytime soon, you're welcome to to our come to our ghost raves. They're gonna be ghastly. Well, you're not really sure how Brian is going to feel about how excited you all are by his impending doom. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully he'll be psyched that it's a death approved and eagerly awaited by Polly. <laughs> I don't know, how do you feel about this? Eh? <laughs> I mean, I'm not afraid to die, and even less so if that's waiting for me. <laughs> oh man, how awkward is it going to be if Brian is actually in love with Scott, and now you're all psyched about his dying for nothing <laughs> like a sociopath? <laughs> It gained three fun for sending Brian to an early awesome grave. <laughs> Yay! Oh, I guess. Everyone chooses a not object. Uh, um. Stapler. Phone. Okay, so you're stapler and I'm phone. If an insane person decided to date and marry the select object, I think stapler wins that one. Yeah, honestly. I think stapler. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, in a way, some people are kind of already buried to their phones. Um, sure. Topical. T to the library. To the library. How fucking dare you? I hate you. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> That day, you spend some time on the library's PCs, uh, sending malicious spam emails in the hopes of stealing other people's money. It doesn't sound very nice, but who's really the one to blame if they respond to such a blatant scam? You lose 10 karma, which isn't even a stat in this game, so who cares, and gain 2 money. <laughs> you notice Polly at the computer next to you. Whispering into one of the speakers? What? Psst. Let me into the deep web, please. I don't know the secret password or whatever, but I swear I'm cool. I just want to buy crazy drugs and do fun crimes. You can totally use my computer camera to look down my shirt. Come on, just let me in. Oh, it's not working. I've been trying to get onto the deep web all day, but it, but it must think I'm a cop or something. That's not how it works. How am I supposed to even do this? There's not even a bouncer I can flirt with. I, you're on your own with this one. Hmm. It's called the Deep Web because you need to bury your computer in an ancient crypt in order to access it. So that's why it's called that. I had no idea. I know the perfect place. I was at this tomb party last weekend where we desecrated Thomas Edison's corpse. You'll love his crypt. Thomas Edison's crypt does turn out to be pretty sweet. It's got electric lights and Wi-Fi. Who installed this? Tom, duh. <laughs> okay, I believe it. No sooner do you have uh, the computer set up than Thomas Edison's angry ghost possesses the monitor. 
Everybody on the deep web knows and trusts Thomas Edison. So he's able to get you in, no problem. What the fuck? Hey, thanks, Tommy. Sorry you poured all that chocolate syrup on your remains. <laughs> oh, dear. No problem. <laughs> Thomas Edison doesn't give a fuck about his chocolatey corpse. He just likes to party. You gain two fun and one creativity, plus a great primary source for your term paper on light bulbs. <laughs> eh, that is a plus. Bitch. All right. All right, now actually go to the fucking gym. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. The match is so intense, and both teams are so into it, that you decide to raise the stakes. By, by betting part of your charm against part of the other team leader's charm. Oh shit. That commitment amazes your whole team, and their spirit, spirit is fueled by determination. We are suddenly in Undertale. Finally, you win, and take two charm from the other team's leader. She's now a bit less fabulous. Take that, bitch! After dodgeball comes the obstacle course. You stare across the gym at it, terrified as are most of your classmates. There are giant centipedes, venomous bears, bloodthirsty magpies circling just under the ceiling, and animals so bizarre one can barely find words to describe them. Good morning, Is students! That a leg whale? <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys and girls. I've imported this special course from regular Creatures High School in New South Wales, Australia. He <laughs> 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 figures. Of Don't be afraid. I believe in each and every one of you. These terrifying creatures will not break your will. <laughs> Says you. I will not let you down, coach. Giant crocs don't even scare me. This is not pee on my <laughs> pants. <laughs> sure, Scott. Finally, worthy adversaries. What's that abomination over there even called? That would be a platypus. <laughs> I love that they're scared of a platypus. <laughs> I'm gonna drag it to hell. The underworld has never seen such horror. They're kinda cute. Come on. Well, don't just stand there. Show them what you got. Clear the course. Uh, I have the bonus. I'm gonna do it. Go. Gotta Sweet. get my knife. Oh, hold my bat. <laughs> grab your trusty Bowie knife, slam a six pack of Fosters, and uh, wait, I gotta do this in an accent. Oh, God. Grab your trusty Bowie knife, slam a six pack of Fosters, and wait into the obstacle course. You're gonna offend everybody. <laughs> and you got like, what, one viewer in Australia? <laughs> Half of one actually considering their Wi Fi. <laughs> <laughs> they dispatch armed platypi, fend off magpies by whipping them with snakes, and punch a koala. Damn drop bears. <laughs> after, win after winning an arm wrestling match against a dr drunk crocodile, you instantly become a hero. <laughs> Whoa, that was awesome. You even made Coach cry. <laughs> it's tears of joy. The will of youth really did find a way. Damien sees it too. I'm not crying. It's just so much murder. <laughs> Your glorious slaughter of endangered animals will go down in history. You gain two fun and one boldness. And a lawsuit from Greenpeace. <laughs> Saw that coming. <laughs> oh dear. Everyone choose something cool. What does it mean by cool? Like actually cold or something epic? Uh, um, <laughs> that's what me and Red never figured out. I, I would assume it means something awesome, so I'm gonna go with amusement park. Uh, Sephiroth's supernova attack in Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> <laughs> You know the attack. <laughs> How important would it be to bring the to bring the selected thing to our first Mars colony? I don't think you could bring that attack. Yeah, probably. And in fact, that attack would probably destroy the colony, so... Probably. I, I probably the amusement park. Probably. Most definitely.
All right. And since you took my light, Barry, I'm I'm just gonna get something else. Uh. Hey, stranger. Hey, hey. Let's see. Uh. Oh, hey, it's marked down. Uh, oh, never mind. It just says too poor for this. I was gonna say, what do you? Ooh, wait. Do you want to take a? Uh, 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 do you I'm not taking take a dragon corpse? heat. <laughs> a no, corpse. I want to say. Do you, uh, do you want to take a corpse to prom? I'm down. Like... <laughs> oh, this um, is gonna be a sure. great thing. I'm gonna sit with Damien and Polly again. All right. You arrive at your chosen table to find Damien dejectedly hafting a ball of mashed potatoes while Polly sadly passes her hand through the same. Oh. Seriously, what do we have to do to get a food fight started in this cafeteria? Honestly, I don't know. I tried throwing pot potatoes at people and yelling food fight, but I think everyone is too scared of me to fight back. I wonder I why. I can't imagine why. I wonder why. Like, Damien, I love you, but I wonder why people are scared. And I can't throw any food because of my stupid ghost hand. Plates, mirrors, antique furniture? Sure, but not food. I mean, you could probably explode food. Probably. There's got to be a way to provoke a food war. My dads are always telling me to be more political. I wonder why. I mean, he is technically a prince. I know, that's why I said I wonder why. Oh, right, this is me. But we're not political. Your strength is hitting things, and my strength is being unbelievably hot all the time. Unbelievably hot. That's it. We set the cafeteria on fire. No. No. No, Damien. <laughs> Wait, no. That's not a solution. That's just arson. Why do we always jump straight to arson? <laughs> because you're a demon. It's hard to watch them struggle through this by themselves. You step in with an idea of your own. All right, what are you gonna go with? Hey, Polly, you know how the Greeks fought a whole war over Helen of Troy's face? Flash the cafeteria. <laughs> hey, yeah, I was trying to do that later anyway after I finished this quart of ecto booze. Just slam the bottle and, f and do it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Polly floats up onto the table and, in a practiced motion, whips her top off. To the victor go the spoils! <laughs> this is a high school cafeteria. Polly's rash action upsets the roiling cauldron of hormones, sets it on fire, <laughs> and tap dances on the ruins. <laughs> oh god! Soon the air is thick with sausage and gravy. Potato crisps fly everywhere like flavored shrapnel. Polly puts her shirt back on now that everyone's too busy fighting to remember why they're fighting. <laughs> oh dear. Looks like mine were really the tits that had launched a thousand chips. Yes. The view you just got makes that pun worth it. <laughs> oh dear. Let's trade places already. Everyone choose a movie. Uh, Avengers. Uh. Infinity War. God damn it. <laughs> Man, I can't believe Polly died in Infinity War. <laughs> Man. Um, Star Wars The Last Jedi. What? Oh, well, there's... Oh, god damn it. Just random. I was gonna say, here we go back with random because there's kind of already figurines. Oh boy. All right. Well, seeing as I have a corpse and I, I don't, well, I can't go to the library anyway, so I'm just I'm gonna go work on that charm. This is gonna be fun. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. <clears throat> Amidst the battle, you spot a fellow player that seems utterly discouraged. She thinks it's not worth any. She, she, she bleh. She thinks she's not worth anything at dodgeball. And she attempts to throw a ball at herself. English, what is it, right? I know. English motherfucker, do I speak it? No. 
You explain to her er, the many ways you think she's unique and wonderful, while also defending the many pleasures in life. With your help, she's capable of finding reasons to keep playing and gains a sense of self-worth. Man, maybe I need that talk. You gain one BFF. Uh, sadly, she's not a part of this game, so that beautiful friendship takes place off screen. And two charm. Oh, here we go. While doing all that, <laughs> you've been uh, carrying your newly acquired corpse as if it was a totally normal thing to do. Oh, but dear. some people seem to think otherwise. <laughs> oh no, it's the four most hateful <laughs> people in the school. I knew this was coming. <laughs> Ugh. Why are you carrying around a corpse, idiot? <sighs> what a shameful display of distaste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a noob. Carrying around corpses is for noobs. <sighs> Ooh, a corpse! I love corpses! Also, I'm super drunk! That's not news to anyone. Okay, the three most hateful <laughs> people in school and Polly. <laughs> <laughs> As the school social elite, we disprove of this. I am the head of the hierarchy, and I can't condone such stupidity under our domain. I'm the taste of this hierarchy, and I don't appreciate such puerile use of a corpse. Also, lesser known fact about corpses, they smell. That's true. <laughs> I'm the fists of the hierarchy, and I want to punch you because punching people is what I do. Of course. Hi. I'm Polly. Also, I'm like super drunk. So whatever Vera says. Yikes. Despite your disregard for stupid societal conventions at school hierarchies, you feel the urge to please them. Maybe that's what this game is about. Really? I didn't know. When you bought this corpse, they totally told you it was a fashion accessory and that they were absolutely not just trying to dispose of a body. But now <laughs> you're starting to get the feeling they might have just been trying to dispose of a body. <laughs> Uh, no time to lose. How can you convince them the corpse is actually a very hot fashion accessory? I don't fucking know. Most of them are worn on your head. Quick, put the corpse. I don't think that would. I don't think I have the creativity for that. I don't think I have the, any. Oh god, this is gonna be bad either way. <laughs> this is gonna be bad either way. <laughs> I can't look. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I don't know what... But I have to because I'm narrating. <laughs> oh, no. Uh... Fuck it. First one. Oh, that was intelligent. <laughs> oh, thank God. Swiftly, you gather the corpse and place it on your head. Huh. <laughs> your, classmates your classmates remain silent just looking at you. Me, sweating in the background. Please, <laughs> just spare me. The tension is great. You do your best to look serious. And fashionable. And I'm still sweating. Hmm. I think what Kai is trying to tell us is that this corpse is a hot fashion accessory. Yes. Yes, indeed. Most fashion accessories are worn on the head. Hats, glasses, earrings, hats again. <laughs> <clears throat> I think it's cool how she's wearing a corpse on her head, and she's still, like, really cool about it. Fuck, I'm, like, big time drunk. Like, tomorrow my hangover will have a hangover. Eh, wait, am I tripping, or is Kai wearing a corpse on her head? I mean, I did a bunch of super shrooms earlier, so I might be tripping. Jesus Christ. You're not tripping, Polly. What? Well, you are tripping. But also, Kai is, in fact, wearing a corpse on her head. And you know what? She is doing it in such a confident way, I hereby conclude that a corpse counts as a very hot fashion accessory. <laughs> I would have thought that was boldness, really. I would have thought that was bold. Well, my smarts and bold are the same thing, but you would think that's more bold. It would also make a pretty convenient way of disposing the many corpses my, my ventures might or may not have produced. I agree. Confidence is what really counts when deciding if something makes a good accessory. Even if that something is completely unhygienic or, or, and uh, unhealthy. <clears throat> <laughs> Still drunk! And so, all of them signed the decree that establishes a corpse as an acceptable fashion accessory, as high school social bureaucracy requires. <laughs> Vera's gonna have fun with this. 
Oh boy, she's gonna make a profit off of that. Uh, I mean, once again, it's a very convenient way of disposing of the bodies her ver her various uh, business ventures produce. I know. Today is a bright day to have a corpse in your possession. <laughs> you gain two charms and one smart. God <laughs> damn. I really didn't think that was gonna end well. I really didn't. Um, sure. Okay then. Uh, oof. I, I guess auditorium. Auditorium. Uh, yeah, I still can't afford the uh thing. And she's in the library, so yeah. Oh fuck! I probably won't be able to get the thing. Well, I. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves have descended to give you a figurative blowjob. Her performance is intense and inspiring. I love that outfit so much. It's adorable. Yes. <laughs> it just looks like roar. And that's it. Rawr. <laughs> it will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play's standards. You get into creativity. Looking at it, you probably should have worked on boldness, but eh. Polly seems really excited oh about trying a reverse remaining Wilkinson with you. Something tells you you still have a chance, you just better get that money. And the only thing you have to do is get all the needed supplies. Oh dear. Which would be fine, except you have no idea what any of them are. <laughs> oh, you're fucked. Luckily, you've got a few spare minutes to try and figure this out. You do a quick search on your phone because you assume the internet must know something about this as long as it's related to very weird sex fetishes. Yeah, just look up or look it up on Urban Dictionary. Nothing. Ah, nothing. You're fucked. While trying other keywords, you spot the coven looking over at your phone. Oh. Hey. Oh, hey, ladies. Always the same with you. What? Could it possibly be they know something about the reverse Romanian Wilkinson? No, they're always bitching so much about saving the world, they would never admit they're in into those kinds of very weird and specific sex things. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you're not searching hard enough on the net. Or maybe you're letting, letting your prejudices blind you. There's not, much uh, there's not much more time to lose here. The solution is clear. Come up with unexpected search terms or try to get people... Or try to get the think, privileges um, to admit. Come up with unexpected search terms. I think this is a creativity challenge. Yep, yes. Yep, that's a creativity. Reverse say, Romanian that's Wilkinson. Smart, you're fucked. Reverse but. Romanian Wilkinson didn't work. You also tried other similar combinations of words. Very word sex fetishes is too generic. While I want to have sex with a ghost doesn't work because it's the title of a popular MTV reality show. How fucking course it is. But then you suddenly have a stroke of divine inspiration. You type, 10 ways to get deported from Denmark. What? Oh, <laughs> and it works. Apparently, getting caught practicing a reverse Romanian Wilkinson is number seven. Right between trying to marry a barracuda and asking politely to be deported from Denmark. <laughs> <sighs> Looks like you need a penguin mask, a bag of marbles, and a kilo of guacamole. How much is a kilo? You're quite sure you spotted someone from your class selling a mask like that the other day. Oh, a a better... kilogram. Oh. You better hope you get that money or you're not getting this ending. And nobody online will mail you a kilo of guacamole. It's probably a health code thing. As for the bag of marbles, that's why God invented Greg's List. You're at Ned <laughs> and suddenly you're receiving tons of messages about it. Most of them are spam or very inappropriate sexual advances. Apparently someone's on to me. But <laughs> some of them are actually people willing to sell you a bag of marbles. Nicely done. In the end, it turned out to be exactly like the old toy commercial jingle. Marbles, marbles, you can never have enough. They're perfect for booby traps and for super weird sex stuff. <laughs> hey, I want to throw out my marble collection now. <laughs> I want to throw that out. I'm gonna find it because I don't know where it is. But I'm gonna find it and I'm gonna throw it out. 
Or you could just like wash them all real, uh, real thoroughly. Just put it all in a in a freaking container and just fill it up with water and soap, and shake the hell out of it. And as for you, you're the Sultan of Search Engines. Now you have the bag of marbles. It's time to get the penguin mask before you start worrying about the guac. At least for this one, it tells you what you need instead of like you're on your fucking own. Well, I remember Vera's route uh, tells you exactly what you need. Really? Uh, yeah. I believe, uh, the, um, basically she's, tr basically Vera's trying to, um, go into, uh, trying to dabble into a sort of blood magic that will allow her to secure the uh, title of prom queen. Oh, okay. And and the materials it needed are quite uh, quite clearly the earring of a, uh, an old goddess, um, the blood of a former prom queen, and I think there was a third component, but I'm not sure. Anyway, but for now you gain two fun, and you're. Oh, yes. Yes, I can do it. Please give me the library tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. You bargain so well with the Craigslist dude that you actually get one money. Well, considering I probably won't be able to get what I want, you'll get it. Okay. Something happens to... You! Yes. Um, sure. On Saturday night, you're at a cool pizza place that cooks pizza in a real pizza oven. Little did you expect that when the chef opens uh, the oven to get your pizza, it, Damien appears out of the flames. How does that even work? Uh, can he teleport through fire? Has he been waiting inside the oven all this time just to make a kick-ass entrance? Ah, the mystery. It just raises the question of how the fuck did he know you were going to be there? <clears throat> My dude, I fucking hate needing people's help, but I might need yours. <laughs> Don't let it get to your head, or I'll stab you so I don't have to owe you anything. Enough threats. Here's the deal, fuckhead. I might or might not feel attracted to your buddy Kai. You know the one. Always making absurd choices, being equal parts stupidly sexy and sexily stupid, and with the nice booty. But I don't want to get my feelings hurt by rushing into love without proper judgment. My dads always say, if you love someone, shoot them and see what happens. Oh, it's this prompt. Oh, no. <laughs> I remember this one. Great fatherly advice, right? Mm. Thing is, Principal Giant Spider, my therapist, and the rule of law all seem to think shooting someone it, 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 to check if they're the one is not very legal. <clears throat> I want to know how his therapist is still alive. I'm just saying. They have strongly recommended that uh, I do all that on what they call a theoretical level. Like, imagining the whole thing. But imagining is for losers. And since you both know Kai and are a loser yourself, I thought you could tell me, what would Kai do if I were to shoot her? Okay, quick question. Have you gotten this prompt before? No. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, let's see this. <laughs> Okay, Kai is all about getting shot. She goes to the doctor every day just to get shot. Shots are the only thing she does when she's partying. So I think you can give her a shot. You're gonna hook me up, right? Because I hooked you up. But like, what he says is like, oh God. First one. Kai is all about getting shot. She goes to the doctor. <laughs> Oh, Whoa. Uh, convenient. <clears throat> I'm looking away. I have the feeling... Mm, I have the feeling dating me, uh, could increase someone's chances of getting shot. Or stabbed. You didn't get to be as big an asshole as me without making some enemies along the way. I'd feel bad if my loved one uh, no, was to get shot because of me, but knowing Kai is so into getting shot is a relief. I fucking hate guilt. <clears throat> Okay, it seems like my heart isn't to be. It seems like my heart isn't being a drunk idiot this time. I might be onto something. Nice. 
And who knows? If she's so into getting shot, I might add some spice into my foreplay, if you know what I- Oh my god, Damien, please! <laughs> That's why I said I'm looking away! Damien! <laughs> This is why I continue mean, looking away. I mean shooting Kai before having sex with her, just to be clear. <laughs> Damien, please. Oh, wow, God. wait, you're welcome, Kai. Both for getting you some demon dick and for the blood loss you're about to experience. <laughs> you had too much blood anyway. Uh, oh, dear. I mean, I'm sure you can uh, siphon some out of uh, the... um. I'm sure you can siphon some out of the little uh, phobias that follow you around, right? Anyway, you gain <laughs> anyway you gain three charm for being such a good friend. Oh dear. Player order has decided on your ability to mimic the noise a, a giraffe makes. Giraffe make um, a sound. Wait, I actually think I've heard this before. Um, okay. <clears throat> It's something like a bleat, only terrifying. I didn't even know Jurassic make a sound, so I'm just gonna give it to you. I'm just giving that to you. Um, sure. So you don't want the library? No, I do want the. I do want the library. You don't want the library. <laughs> Yazzie, I swear to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That day, you spend some time in the library's PCs, mining Bitcoin. This is supposed to have something to do with solving algorithms and the rise of cryptocurrency. Uh, but you guess that nobody actually has any fucking idea how it actually works. Anyway, you gain two Bitcoin, which is equal to two million dollars. Which, unfortunately, is equal to two monster dollars, so two money. In the course of your activities, you come across Vera and Polly hatching yet another scheme. You sneak a little closer so you can eavesdrop. Hi. Fucking Slav squat on the library table. <laughs> Listen, this has been a fruitful partnership so far in terms of making people look like imbeciles. But I think it's time we monetize. Sick burns don't buy fresh outfits. Yeah, yeah, fine, whatever. I guess I could use some new thongs or whatever, but like, I don't want to stop making people look dumb just so we can make money. I don't want to sell out. Personally, I can't wait to sell out, but you have a point. We can't sacrifice our brand. The question, of course, is how do we do both? Yeah, how do we get rich off of yanking people's chains? Ugh, careful with your choice of words, Polly. What? Chains are a big thing for ghosts. Of course. They don't seem to have any immediate ideas. Maybe you can offer a solution. Make a phony workout craze or steal. I want to say phony workout craze. <laughs> I've seen how this has gone poorly before, so... Yo, you've, you've gotten this problem before? Yeah, and I've seen how workout crazy has gone poorly before, so let's see it if I, let's see if I can get it good. Second time's a charm. Yes. Oh my god, that's so good. We can make up a bunch of ridiculous exercises like tongue squats and dick crunches and encourage people to post selfies of their workout success. Let's see. One week subscription to our uh prop what does that say? Proprietary exercise tracker. Thank you. For one dollar. Forty nine ninety nine for every after er, for every hour thereafter. I think we might actually have a turn of profit profit on this one, Polly. And hey, if a bunch of people get stronger dicks and tongues in the process, I'm not gonna complain if you know what I mean. You have no idea what you've just unleashed into the world, but those two seem happy with you. You gain a creativity and two smarts. Alright. Alright. And please give me the uh, shop during lunch. Nah. <laughs> that day, while rehearsing for the class play, you can't help but feel that you're not as good as the role requires you to be. 
There doesn't seem to be any ordinary way of getting yourself there, but there might be an extraordinary way. You summon the devil, one of many, and make uh, and make a deal to enhance your creativity just a bit. You gain two creativity. You also lose three years of your total lifespan as your end of the deal, but who cares? Those weren't going to be happening in-game anyway. <laughs> nah. After your previous adventures, now corpses are an acceptable and quite hot fashion accessory. <laughs> oh dear. You've become a well-known trendsetter, advocating for your beloved corpses. Life is now all fancy and busy. Luckily, uh, you have your sexy, uh, sexy secretary to help you uh, with your new uh, task. Yeah! Oh. Hi, Scott. M Mrs. Kai, we have a problem. If you had assumed your sexy, secre sexy secretary had to be female, then shame on you. <laughs> I was hoping it was Damien, but that's just me. It's been leaked that Vogue's next issue will uh, include it, an article titled 10 Reasons Why Wearing a Corpse as a Fashion Accessory is Not Chic and Probably Also Illegal. <laughs> oh, shit. I've done some research and found the journalist. It's a bro called Fyodor Fedora. Of course. What do we do, boss? Huh. <laughs> Out journalizing them to the death. Kill his family and send severed heads as a warning. Ooh, I'm kind of leaning towards that, honestly. Is your creativity high enough to out-journalize him to the death? My creativity is at eight. Is and your boldness is high enough? Uh, okay, so it's either or, I would think. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure neither of them are fun. I would assume at least one of them is smart. And that's nine, which is decent, yeah? Yeah. Alright, kill them. Bold. Way to go, boss. Nothing like a friendly reminder to show people you care. Let me schedule the murder in your agenda. You keep Scott out of the murder because he's too pure for that. You take care of it yourself because you're a responsible young adult that can take care of her own murders. <laughs> soon thereafter, uh, murdering Fedora. So wait, soon after murdering Fedora's parents. Boss! It worked! The Fedora bro changed his article. Read. <laughs> the other day, I woke up to an unexpected surprise from Kai the well-known trendsetter and corpse advocate. I was sure the whole corpse thing was getting old, yet Kai sent me a whole <laughs> new vision. This version of corpses was home delivered, came in smaller, uh, came in a smaller, more portable size, and were even customized for me. I have to say, maybe there's more to corpses than I first thought. I'm wearing these as edgy earrings. Oh dear. Oh god. Oh god. Hooray! Corpses are saved! Oh no. Is this guy really wearing his parents' severed heads as earrings? I think he is. <laughs> well, today is a great day. No consequences for murdering two innocent people, even though it was documented in a magazine. You also gain two fun and one boldness. <laughs> god, I have 14 fun. Everyone choose something bad. Um... Murder. Although I think that's kind of good. In this Necrophilia. Universe. Oh god, you immediately win. How horrible it would be if selected thing was part of a torture device, torture or, device. Legal, <laughs> or a legal oh punishment. I, yeah, I think I win because I think murder is already a legal uh, punishment in some parts of the country. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, sure. Okay, so put me in the shop. In shop. Hey, stranger. All right. Penguin mask. It's gonna cost all your money. Later, Gator. Fuck it, I need that shit. Oh my god, did you see? You I just have lost all my smarts. Minus four smarts. Oh my god. Good grief. You're well, stupid as hell! Here's hoping I know someone who can hook me up with guacamole! 
All right. I think you're fucked, man. <laughs> As usual, Miranda sits before her immaculate array of carefully arranged silverware. Damien, predictably, is examining her biggest knife. Hmm. Of course. So, this is the one for killing people, right? Uh, disgraceful. What? Good heavens, no. This is the butter dagger. It would be unseemly to use it on me. So, what then? Am I supposed to use this scrawny looking knife to kill a dude? No, no, no. If you simply must kill someone mid meal, it is customary to use the fish knife. This is merfolk court silverware, after all. That tiny thing! I might as well wait for my victim to die of old age. That is usually how it's done in my kingdom, yes. That or poison. This is ridiculous. Yo, you there. Which knife would you use to kill a guy? Please don't say the fish knife. The a spoon. What, you need blades to kill people? Holy shit. That is so much more metal. Why didn't I think of that? I guess when the only tool you have is a knife, every problem looks like a pro uh, problem you should stab with a knife. Thank you for opening my eyes to the world of silverware-related murder. But which spoon? This is very important. Do you mean the teaspoon or the dessert spoon or perhaps the cleverier spoon? No, 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 none of these are appropriate. Uh, what about this one here? Uh, the one with the jagged edges on? Oh, you mean the murder spoon? Of course not. That's for hard-boiled eggs. I mean, I would use the egg spoon. I would use it as a murder spoon. The same, honestly. <laughs> Damien nods thoughtfully, uh, but pockets the spoon when Miranda's not looking. Looks like the school's about to get a lot messier. <laughs> Trade places. Choose Everybody a food. Everybody chooses a food. Um... Chicken sandwich. Because I think that's Pork what my dad dumplings. is thinking. Pork dumplings? Alright. How unappealing a pizza would be with the food chosen as its topping. Yeah, pork dumplings tend to be a little moist and unappealing looking as a topping, you know? I've never even seen them, so I wouldn't know. But and I'll like, go you can spread out a chicken salad to make it actually look like pizza toppings. I said sandwich. Oh, chicken sandwich. Uh, still, you can spread that out to make it look like actual pizza toppings. Eh, that's true. I don't know what it is, but I'm just gonna take your word for it. Alright, week three, evening. Um, sure. Alright, so where are you gonna go? You wanna go to class? Uh. Um... <laughs> I think you need to go to class. Yeah, fuck it, I'll go to class. You have- you're- you're an actual zombie, you're stupid as shit right now. Huh? <laughs> Stop sleeping in class! Me. <laughs> <laughs> Same, actually. That day, you'll learn a ton of spells that are as cool as they are seemingly useless. A spell to renew Sticker's stickiness. I would use that. I would a spell to turn chocolate and vanilla ice cream into vanilla and chocolate ice cream. A spell to get a plus two smarts. You actually use that last spell, and you gain two smarts. You need to use that multiple times. Why are you using it once? I'm guessing it's an intricate ritual. Okay, so <laughs> you got the marbles, and you got the penguin mask. You posted a tweet a while ago begging for a kilo of guacamole. You promised a handsome pay- oh god. You have no money. And today, the, uh, uh, and today is the day that paid off. Someone with uh, the clearly fake account of at, Wilkin at Wilkinson Romanian 69 has DM'd you. You've arranged a meeting at the outskirts of your school where all shady deals take place. Boy, this is complicated. If only you could buy guacamole at the supermarket or the pharmacy. Others usually tell stories of how oh, it, it was done that way centuries ago. The good old times. While daydreaming of days when guac was easier to get, you bump into Al at Wilkinson Romanian 69. I can't wait to see who this is. 
who turns out to be none other than Liam. <laughs> of course hey. it would be him. Heard you needed some bespoke sex supplies. What? I've lived for many centuries. Of course I know what a reverse Romanian Wilkinson is. Not to mention where to find some good guac. I'm all in for people ready to explore the limits of their sexualities at the potential ill uses of avocado. I'm oh, so wow. happy I don't like avocado. But this is going to cost you, my fellow friend. Okay, so... <laughs> Blackmail. Blackmail? Uh, yeah. Because I think the first one might be smart. The first okay. one would be money, probably. Yeah, true. Ah, <sighs> the eternal struggle of the artisanal sex merchant. Our natural clients are, by their very nature, also the most devious and depraved. Go on, take the unclean spoils of your cruel blackmail. <laughs> I will yield in order to protect my spotless reputation. <laughs> oh, alas, I see you blushing, you little shit. <laughs> I know, see, he's blushing. You get the feeling he's enjoying this. <laughs> Maybe getting blackmailed this is fetish. <laughs> I don't want to know. Eh, who cares? The important thing is that you've obtained the guac while also gaining two boldness and one charm. All right. All right. Uh, let's just go creative. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, you aren't especially good nor inspired. For once, it seems like you aren't getting the classic creativity boost from the auditorium. Me, when I was doing my music for concerts. But afterwards, while talking to your classmates, you're having trouble conveying your point in a discussion. So you decide to convey it through music. Pick up your fiddle. You no. start singing. You start singing and suddenly everyone joins you in a kick-ass musical number. It's so amazing that the people with whom you were arguing totally get your point and change their minds once the song is over. And you gain two creativity. Sweet. <laughs> ah, life is good. You're a successful trendsetter that has moved to monster kind, uh, to a more corpse-friendly society. Or oh. it would be good if you weren't about to crash into the three biggest enemies of your progress and inclusiveness. The oh, wolf pack yeah. is oh. here. <laughs> are you carrying a corpse? What a loser. Corpses are dumb. We're taking your corpse so we can make fun of it. Hey, Damien, remember how you owed me earlier? The bigots. Prepare to die. Oh. Uh, I think this one's you. I'm gonna so. Hey, a corpse! Give it to me! I want its loot! Also, you're a monster, right? Prepare to die! The haters! Greetings, my love. Oh, no. It's me, the interdimensional prince. I'm here in your dimension to marry some cute high schoolers. Take the corpse. Ooh, what's that you're carrying with you? Is it some kind of oh. dry, skinny, funky-smelling <laughs> high schooler? Can I marry it? I was just joking. And uh, the interdimensional prince? <laughs> okay, let's sell this with the creeps. Or whatever. This dude isn't good news for sure. This can't be good. You're surrounded by jerks. It's time to fight for your corpse and for a more inclusive corpse-friendly society. But how? Uh, you're woke enough to acknowledge your corpse doesn't need a knight and shiny armor to protect it. It can protect itself. I don't think a corpse can protect itself. Uh, I, I feel like the top one is creativity and the bottom one is charm. Either way, I feel like they both won't end well. Well, one way to find out. Yeah, random. Not so smart. I told you! <laughs> no. You leave your corpse alone. It can defend itself. 
I told you. It's can <laughs> It's a corpse. <laughs> the Slayer totally loots it. The wolf pack laugh at it until they get bored and leave it to look for someone else to mock. What, a, what about the prince? Finally, the interdimensional prince takes the corpse with him and flees to his dimension, ready to marry it. Oh, oh that dude no. is so wrong on so many levels all the time. Anyway, no more corpse for you. What the fuck did you think would happen? Can you take care of your own fashion accessories? I knew I shouldn't have done that one. This is why we can't have nice things. Assuming a corpse even is a nice thing. So it looks like you're not getting the corpse ending. Nope. You lose two boldness and one smarts. Uh, fuck! It was the last one! Uh, I am totally asking Polly. Hi! <laughs> I don't even know what I want to do. I think... uh, just ask just ask Damien with you. He yeah, might like... be into you enough, and you might be bold enough. Who knows? I uh... have seven boldness. So he tells me, you know what? It's at least trying. Yeah. Because the game mocked me when I, because I thought I was going to get a special ending when I was playing this by myself yesterday. And I, I, I got forever alone. So fuck Yo. it. Just going to get rejected. Let's just get rejected. All right. I think you got rejected. 100%. Finally, you pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. Prom with you? I what got rejected. Noob. What a yep. noob. I'd have more fun setting ants on fire, which is what I'll actually be doing at prom night. <laughs> setting ants on fire is rad. Go get a life. Now get out of my sight. Uh, you fucking suck! You were so ashamed by your failure that after prom, you photoshopped Garfield into all of your prom pics as if he was your prom <laughs> date. Yeah, Garfield the orange cartoon cat. Not your brightest idea. Anyway, even with your Photoshop still skills, you still couldn't Photoshop the sadness in, of your face away. Sad. Um, I knew that was gonna happen. Sure. Penguin mask, guacamole, bags of marbles, it's all here! You're the real deal, huh? So, it's a date, and what a date shall be, right? So happy to finish that unfinished business. Prom night comes, and you're as ready as you can be for the reverse Romanian Wilkinson. <laughs> you still have no clue about how it works, but y you'll trust in the odds by improvising and giving Polly the lead. Reverse Romanian Wilkinson, here we go. Yep, that's the ending. <laughs> in the end, it turns out to be mind-blowing, even though you're still frankly incapable of describing it. But who cares? You'll never be the same again. Also, he did a good deed in helping Polly, but she's still the same. She catches your confused look. What? This is you. Oh, that's that. This is you. No, this is. This is you. Polly. No, this is Polly. But it's still the narrator speaking for her. Oh yeah, about that. I lied about the whole unfinished business thingy. I just like a good old reverse Romanian Wilkinson. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sorry either. Oh boy, Brian, Brian. best. Best at secret ha secret handshakes. <laughs> Damien's cool. Wait, there's more squat to this? What the fuck? Me. <laughs> Me. So yeah, you got that ending. Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After Monster Prom, we kept on living our lives. Falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning who we were and who we could be. And you know what? As it always does, life happened. And it was beautiful. Damien and Scott teamed up and took second in the National Pokemon t Tag Tournament. The crowd was amazed. Their Pokemon team did taxes as if there was no tomorrow. It was a thing of beauty. That's how you know this game is fake. People, or the humans, actually know how to do taxes. <laughs> yeah. Polly's drug cooking skills proved to be useful, 
and she became a chemist for the pharmaceutical industry. Yet, on her free time, she still cooks drugs, 100%. <clears throat> of course. Her greatest inventions so far are the watermelon fla or, or watermelon flavored ecstasy and a thing called LS Dope. That sounds like something she would have made. Miranda got a job at being princess of her kingdom. Which was wasn't it actually kind of her job already? Eh? <laughs> I mean, uh, you well, you surely don't see her complaining about it. During those three weeks, Monster Prom seemed bigger than life. And then it was gone, just like that. The battle from Monster Prom might have ended then, but there were lots of battles left in that war called youth. But once again, we were young and unafraid. We were ready to start. The end. The end. Man, I wish I kept that fucking course. I knew doing random and doing that first one was just gonna be bad. Yeah. <laughs> Should've I just talked you my into guts. it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm blaming you for it, damn it. <laughs> it wasn't my fault, that was you. <laughs> uh, and then I got rejected by Damien again. Uh, fuck. Next time. I'm gonna get that insane one. Like, that I was trying to get originally, but had no money. Oh boy. Ah, oh boy. I still love that you managed to get that, that other secret ending. The other lewd ending. Yep. Oh boy. Ah, the school play. I saw that in Damien's sword, it says stage prop and there's a tag on it. <laughs> like, same. Actually. I would probably forget to take it off. Honestly, I think he's required to leave it on to reassure Vicky and uh, Miranda. Probably. Knowing them. Enjoying, enjoying life. life. Oh, uh, and there's me and uh, there's me and Polly, trying yep. to keep up with uh, Damien. Yep. <clears throat> what an episode this was. Yep. <laughs> uh, and now it's the end. If you guys like this video, leave a like to show support. Subscribe for more videos. Hit that bell button because YouTube is done with notifications. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Peace. Peace.